Yes, I know, the last couple of videos were about quite difficult topics, but such are the times, right? my awesome curious people welcome back to my channel this is once again Martina from Argentina as I said on my last video I wanted to talk a little bit about mental health during these difficult times if you haven't seen all the videos about all my story being stuck at sea for 90 days I'm gonna leave the links up there for you guys to check out or if you rather read because I know those videos are quite long you can read about that on my blog I'm gonna leave the links below but I think this is a good time since we're all in lockdown in our houses or precisely perhaps not in our houses to talk a little bit about mental health, staying positive and taking care of ourselves. Today I want to share with you all the tools and strategies that helped me keep myself motivated and positive even when I had basically lost my job, at least temporarily, and when I was stuck somewhere against my will. But before I go into that, I would like to share with you all the things that our company put in place for us to be as comfortable as we could during these times. So let's dive right in. Mental health in general is a topic that is always in our minds when working at sea. It's not easy to be away from home and your usual care circle, so we do normally have a lot of structures put in place to look after the mental health of crew. But today I want to talk specifically about the things that were put in place during the quarantine. So you probably know that we were isolated in individual cabins for 15 days. And in the beginning this was one of the first difficult times. Not only we were all alone in a really small space and with nothing much to do, but we also wanted a lot of information to get to us, because a lot of things were happening in the world. So the TV and telephones became key to sharing all this information and keeping us in contact between each other. And then since I work in that area, I want to talk a little bit about all the resources that were put in place on the TVs for the cabins, since it was basically the only thing we could do all day, watch TV. The amount of information that was arriving from every direction was overwhelming and sometimes it would contradict and it would change every day. So it was important for us to keep clear channels of communication and official ones as well because we had the news, we had the hearsay and then we had all the chain of communication coming from the Miami offices of Royal Caribbean to each individual ship. In our case, we set up a daily show in which the management team would inform us of the daily updates of the repatriation process, basically by nationality. Something really smart they did, they set up an app so we could send questions about our countries or specific things that had us a little bit confused about compensation and going back to work and stuff like that, which were big interrogants at that time. But information is not everything. I think we've all been through that social interaction withdrawal during these times of quarantine. I know you enjoy being in your house in your pajamas and not having to go out, but let's face it, we are social beings. And that was a big need that needed to be filled during those times. Remember, some ships had even more than 15 days of quarantine. Some ships had months of it because they had cases on board and they had to be super careful. On this show, not only information was shared, but as well birthday wishes and words of support. We even had a whole separate program in which the CEOs and the VPs of the company would record messages specifically for the crew, as well reassuring us that the company was doing well, all in all, and sharing with us words of support. I think that really feels good when the big players of your company are addressing directly to you. They would even answer questions sent in by the crew. Interviews were being held with different people giving their input about the situation and even the people planning our repatriation were telling us basically face to face how things were going. So I think that set a good deal of transparency within all the process and would clarify some doubts that people might have. As well, they would share videos and pictures of people at home other seafarers or the family of seafarers or other cruisers that were excited to come back cruising again. I think that was a really nice touch. We put down all the channels that are usually meant for guests and instead we put in place a lot of movie channels, a workout channel and channels specific to the main nationalities that are usually on board, those being Philippines and India. The whole crew was encouraged to share their talents with others, whatever that may be, to be broadcasted to everyone else. So for example, in the case of Brilliance of the Seas, our executive chef stepped up and set up 
a live radio in which he would take calls from different crew members requesting for songs, he would make trivias and competitions, and even give out prizes. So I think that it was a great way to keep us entertained and interacting with each other from our rooms. Now talking a little bit more seriously, our managers were actually requested to give us a call every day just to check in on us. Not only that the food was okay, we had the basic amenities we needed like toilet paper and such, but as well to check in on our mental state. And I think that was quite important because not everybody has a lot of people to reach out to, maybe at home or you're in a different time zone and alone in your room, your mind could take you to darker places. So. I think it was good to have someone call you. And probably the most specific resource put out there for a crew was a support hotline that you could call and seek for advice regarding economical struggles and just depression perhaps, struggles and things like that. I personally didn't use it, but I heard testimonies of other people using it and being helped to clear their minds a little bit about the difficulties they might be facing. And I really hope that helps more than one person because sometimes you might not have a friend to lean on. So hopefully that made an impact. That was on my ship. I would like to hear how things were on your ship. So leave a comment below. I have to say in all the things that could be controlled, the management of the ship really wanted to give us the best experience possible with entertainment, with good food, even better than the one that we normally get and the activities that we could arrange given the social distance norms and everything. So all of these really helped us keep our minds off of the worst topics of the time which were being basically unemployed, being away from home and just all the burden of all these news flying from every direction. Since the only thing we could do actually was just wait and see how things unfolded. But unfortunately the entertainment and the distraction is not enough for someone dealing with a very difficult situation economically, maybe the loss of somebody at home due to the disease or any other reason. Our work arrangement is always complicated. Working per contract always puts you at risk of, like what happened now, being laid off unexpectedly with no major compensation. Like for example, in Argentina, a decree was put in place to make it illegal for companies to fire you due to the pandemic. A kind of security that we don't really have at sea. And unfortunately, these superficial fixes are not gonna fix someone going through a real deep struggle. Royal Caribbean did step up with compensation that they gave out to everybody on Group 2, as I explained before, basically the people that did not want to remain but had to because flights were just not happening. And they even extended it later to the people that chose to stay, whatever the reason that was. One area in which I wish I had seen more improvement was the fact that the minimum manning crew, they were actually overburdened with more hours of work than we normally have. And we're talking about positions that usually have 10 weeks contract because of how demanding their jobs are. And they usually take another 10 weeks off during this time. Now they will have longer vacations, but remember, seafarers don't get paid on vacation. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. And I wish they were more compensated, if not in a monetary way, at least emotionally and with support, because I've seen a lot of managers really pushing down on the minimum crew to work harder and harder, when I would suppose at these times they should be thankful for these people staying on board, because actually they had no chance to choose and go home even when their contracts ended. My point with all this is that mental health is a really complicated matter that needs a really complicated structure of support. And I wish that by raising awareness of the difficulties that seamen and women face, we can push our companies and governments and laws to secure better conditions for seafarers in general, about job security and just the lifestyle we have in general on board. There's people that choose to work far away from their home to make a reasonable income for their family and they live under a lot of pressure. So I think we should just understand all the stories that can happen at sea. I want to dedicate these videos to those that lost their lives at sea during the quarantine, either due to this horrible virus or those who lost their lives to suicide. You might have heard in the news we had up to 10 suicides in one month, in just a couple of weeks. So that really hit the crew. Of course, during difficult times, people try to find someone to blame, basically. And this time the blame was basically split between the CDC, the cruise ship companies and the governments. Fingers were being pointed at who was stopping the repatriation process, the CDC with their rules, cruise ships not wanting to spend the money in the repatriation and governments closing their borders 
to the travel of seafarers. This is how you might have seen in the news a lot of crew members parked in protests on the majesty of the seas. They put up banners calling out the company about the suicides and requesting for the captain to step out and give them answers on Explorer of the Seas. Another group of crew members whose flights were cancelled a million times started a hunger strike and this is a moment where I think maybe actually asking people to wait for longer instead of giving them 10 different dates just to cancel them 10 different times I think that can be sometimes even more straining I don't know, it's just an opinion from the top of my head And then you had all the international news picking up on stories of different crew members from different countries holding up signs and telling about their stories which in some cases they were really struggling with difficult situations In my case I did not agree with the sensationalist headlines that went out there talking about how the Argentinian government was leaving us behind and forgetting about us when actually the chartered repatriation flights to Argentina were prioritized for those elderly and people that had run out of money being stuck abroad for months I don't think we were the ones that had it worst during this pandemic we had some compensation and we had food and a roof over our heads it's not my intention to make a video with preppy emotional support and quotes and stuff like that. I'm actually gonna give you tools that work, sometimes psychologically and even scientifically based on why these things can help you with stress. So I'm gonna divide this into the main topics I think we should work on when we're going through difficult times and finally the way I put everything together and really made it work. So for me the main points were coping with the things that were happening expressing the things that I was feeling, appreciating that what I could appreciate at the time, connecting with others around me, exercising, a little bit of self-care, and finally, motivation. And I'm gonna tell you everything about how I got the motivation to work on all these at the end. To really be able to work in your feelings, you have to first identify them. We all have different ways in which we can process our feelings. For me, it's talking to others. When I say the things I feel out loud, I can really analyze them. Did that feel honest to me? That was a little bit dramatic maybe? So I can really analyze what I think and to see if I agree or not with myself, basically, let's say. Other people might write or might produce art, even meditating, having a conversation with yourself, and another infinite ways of just venting your feelings. But basically, first you have to face them in order to be able to work on them. It is well known that naming things is a way of controlling things and harnessing them. So don't stop yourself at I'm sad or I'm angry. Really go deep into the whys of what you're feeling. Is something frustrating you? What specific losses of this year really hurt you? And that way you can identify what really is important to you and which feelings are really worth having. Embrace those that really mean something for you and that you really want to work on and identify those that sometimes are a little bit of a whim and you can let go. Remember, if you can do something about it, do it. If you can't, let it go. There's things that are greater than us, especially at this kind of situation. We all have two sides to ourselves, our emotional side and our rational side. The emotional one is the one that is the loudest and is gonna fill your mind with a lot of thoughts, a lot of the times negative. That's when our rational side should step up and have a conversation with it. Think through all these negative thoughts that you're having, analyze them and sometimes even debunk them because most of them are not well fundamented at all. For me, what really helps is the classic pros and cons list. It helped me decide whether I wanted to go back home or not. When I was seeing my thoughts on a page, I could really assess them and say, okay, this is really important to me, this maybe not so much. I would sometimes write positive conclusions and words of support that I would just come up for myself and I could go back to read them again. If you can literally get your hands on a notebook, I think that's great. This is one that I have that is very precious to me because a friend gave it to me and basically I didn't have much to write up until this point. But when I was transferred into Liberty of the Seas, at that time I felt a little bit overwhelmed about everything. So I want to quickly share with you some of the things that I wrote here. This is literally my page of should I stay or should I go? And I put all the pros and cons of staying and going. So basically I have, there's free food on this ship. I can have a social life, but I don't know who's gonna stay and I don't know if I'm gonna have fun. The Wi-Fi is slow. And this is the one that tilted the scale for me. I might have to wait more time to go back to work. So as you can see, I basically just like canceled that option and I chose this one and I said, I'm gonna work on myself when I go back home. 
some of the fun things I put on the going back list is seeing my family, perhaps my friends because of the quarantine, being comfortable at home, good Wi-Fi, my longboard. This is gonna depend on what's important to you. I also made some noodles, sometimes it helps you just like put your feelings out there, perhaps in a abstract way. And I have some really cool quotes here. I'm gonna show you this page later because it's basically my best tip is what I did on this page, but I'm gonna tell you about that later. I just wanna share with you some of the phrases that I wrote around here. When you belong someplace, you will always find your way there. That's me talking about cruise ships and traveling in general. I know it, I'm gonna be back at that. Sudden change can be painful, but don't fight it. Seize the opportunity to renew. I mean, I feel like an emotional support guru right there, but yeah, sometimes we go into that raw state and the artist inside of us really blossoms. When everything around you hurts, be the first to treat yourself right. Happiness starts in oneself. My goodness, that's steep, but that's so true. Physical distance, not social distance. This was a good reminder to myself that yes, we are supposed to stay apart physically, but with today's technology, there's no excuse to not stay connected. And I'm gonna touch base on this a little bit later. So anyways, that's a little bit of that. I'm gonna show you my favorite page a little bit later. Another of the topics I said before is appreciation. I know it's really difficult to focus on the good when everything around you and everything that matters seems to be crumbling, but that's the point. Allow yourself to smile and to appreciate those things that you usually give for granted. Is the sky beautiful? Look at it. It is beautiful. Be happy about it. I was happy that my quarantine was spent right next to Coco Cay. Sure, I couldn't go there, but I had that amazing view. Appreciating a great plate of food can set me up for the day, honestly. Enjoy like no one's watching. Honestly, your happiness comes first. Who cares? And laugh. Laugh like you're silly. There's no price for your happiness. <laughs> my next point is connect. Connect to those around you. We're all going through the same and going through the same difficult experience, it's proven to tighten the bond between people. You already have something in common with everyone going through the same thing as you. Or you can also reach to those friends and family members that have known you all your life and know what your priorities are, sometimes even more than you, and they can help you cope with all these feelings. Listen to each other, laugh with each other, spend time with each other, share moments and push each other to improve and to keep a healthy and positive lifestyle. You heard about this one a million times, but exercise. Other than the obvious benefits of being active, exercising literally releases endorphins and dopamine into your bloodstream. That's not only gonna make you feel great, it's gonna make you look your, at yourself better in the mirror and you're gonna be excited to keep doing it over and over again. You're not only working on your body, but you're literally tricking your brain into feeling better. And it's not even a trick, you are feeling better. It's gonna help you with your weight control and we all know that we need that in quarantine. It's gonna help you with your self-esteem, with your digestion, with your sleep. I know we all might be suffering some kind of insomnia due to all the things in our head. So being a little bit tired can help you sleep through the night. A really big one is self-care. One of the common signs of depression is that getting out of bed and doing some of the most simple tasks of the day might seem like a burden when you're not feeling motivated. Keep in your mind that you deserve to be pampered and you need it more than ever, so why not? Don't keep pushing yourself even lower when you're already in a difficult situation. Every little thing that is gonna make you feel better is gonna help you get to that positive state of mind. Set up some nice music in the morning to motivate you to get out of bed, to motivate you about the day when you're getting ready. Take a long, nice shower and do all the things that really pamper you. Use all those expensive products that you always save for an occasion. Do your hair, do your makeup, pick up a fun outfit or an outfit that express how you're feeling that day. Try out new things. A pandemic is a good excuse for anything. Dye your hair. <laughs> Cook those favorite meals. I mean, stay away from all the anxious snacking. Not too much comfort food, eh? But it might not be the best time to go on a full strict diet. And make that comfort purchase that you were thinking about. If it makes you happy, it might be the time. When I pick a cool outfit and I play the right music, I really feel empowered and let's face it, only a fierce and well put together person can go through all these difficulties. So don't be afraid. Sure, all this advice is great and all, but if you're lacking motivation, that's specifically the problem. So my friends, this is where my notebook comes in again. Let me show you. If you want to achieve your goals, as small as or big they are, materialize them. Put them on paper. This way you will have a commitment to start working on your goals. Choose a system that allows you to see progress. 
if you paid attention to the previous steps, basically we've already identified all the things that are worth it for us and that really make a difference and an impact on what really makes us happy, whether that be in the moment, in the day, in a month or in our life. But this is not all just positive gibberish, it has a reason and let me explain. By putting your goals on paper, you have them at hand to look at them and really focus on what you want to work on each day. It can be a nice artsy project to make yourself a list of things that you want to achieve on the long run and daily. Having something to complete every day with your goals is going to make you look forward to actually completing them. It is scientifically proven that having a reward is going to make you work towards a goal. So basically, for example, what I do, I set for myself two different diagrams. These are my long-term goals, those that I want to work on when I went back home, basically, for me. But it can be any milestone for you. So basically what I did, I just drew them and I feel, okay, when I feel that I've accomplished them, I'm going to paint them in and then I'm going to have a nice drawing, painting, mural of my goals all colored in. It's a good way to visualize them and to remember them. Perhaps someday you have nothing to do and you say, okay, what can I work on instead of watching Netflix all day? Okay, go to your goals page and find something that you can do to work towards any of these goals. That way you can find purpose on your everyday routine. If that sounds a little bit too overwhelming, you can use a daily task list. This way, even the small things that you don't feel motivated to do during your day because you'd rather just lie on your couch all day, can be achieved and can be something, again, to look forward to doing because you can complete it in your list. That way, all those small things that sometimes we struggle to do, like brushing our teeth every night because we are just already in bed watching Netflix and we can't be bothered to get up, make it into a goal, make it into something that you're motivated to because you'll feel awesome when you tick that thing off your thing and when you feel that you've really completed things. And when you don't, you're gonna judge yourself for not doing it. You're gonna make yourself push harder the next day just for the good feeling of putting a tick on it. And a good trick is don't set yourself for unrealistic standards of things that you always dreamed of doing and you never set yourself to do. On a daily goal, put all those small things that you need to be reminded yourself to do every day, like drinking water or taking the stairs. And again, set yourself up for a win. Add simple things that you can do every day that sometimes you skip and make them something that is rewarding to you. That's a good way to trick your brain into feeling accomplishment. For example, I'm gonna share the ones that I wrote. Eat healthy. Exercise, stretch, do yoga, moisturize, floss, brush my teeth and clean my face, drink a lot of water, get some vitamin D, enjoy nature, laugh out loud, have a meaningful conversation, learn something new, work on chores or a project, take the stairs. So sometimes I would even give myself a smiley face or a star for really doing it. Here I drew a cloud because I couldn't get that vitamin D on those days. So. Yeah, you can have fun with it and it can be an artsy project. Mine is not that beautiful, but you get the idea. So at the end of those two weeks, I wrote an assessment for myself. Two weeks with no rice, which I usually always eat on board. I only drank water, smiley face. I didn't have any sodas. They were actually free and I had to really concentrate on like, don't take the free soda. Just had bread once or twice. Burgers without a bun proud of myself right there. I no longer struggle getting their stairs all day. So that was super cool actually, because I would go up and down the stairs all day and eventually I didn't feel tired anymore. I stayed away from desserts and I put a star over there for me. That is true. I mostly avoided desserts. Sometimes I would take a second course, but at least it's not sugar, <laughs> right? Right? And I added a special title down there saying, I'm excited about my projects. Which is true, I had to really push myself to see all the positive things after all those negative things that this year brought, but I'm really happy to be working on my projects now. Basically being here for you, with you. This is how I motivated myself to work on the small and the big things that make myself happier, healthier, and set me up for a positive mindset. I really, really hope this helped you and I hope you saw all the actual benefits that these things can have and how you can really trick your brain into feeling better. So if you really liked all these tips and you would like to see them written down and a lot of pictures from my, my time on Liberty of the Seas, I invite you to go read my blog. I'm gonna leave you the link below as well and you can leave a comment over there too. I would love to see the ways that you guys keep yourself happy at home with maybe your family, your pets, what projects you have. I would like to hear that from you guys. So leave a 
comments below if any of these helped you or inspired you give a big thumbs up for this video and subscribe for more i promise a lot of positive things are coming to this channel because here as you see we work for actively being positive and taking the best of every day and of our lives so guys stay curious and i'll see you next time bye bye